Well, good morning, everyone. <laughs> I can say good morning even though it's evening because uh, I post these in the morning. And then you'll watch it in the morning. So, hence, good morning, everyone. <laughs> uh, today, we're going to be working on a Techniques dual cassette deck. An RS-TR210. Uh, this is a... Uh, Techniques is a is a good brand. We'll just put it that way. Uh, a lot of people feel that they're top of the line, but you know some of their stuff is, some of their stuff isn't. Just like any of the any of the brands out there. Well, there's some brands that are are bottom, and then I don't know what's worse than bottom. But anyway, we have our dual cassette deck. Uh, digital readout on this one uh, you know same same as the other one we did well it wasn't a techniques it was a tech wood but anyway uh, auto reverse on this one you have your reverse mode uh, balance record level I mean there's a little bit more you can do on this one when you're recording and 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 dubbing uh, has a counter on this one the other one didn't you know you can uh, for synchro start you can uh, X1 speed and X2 speed uh, we'll see how we can do work this one this one I should be able to download a manual if I want to uh, this one's in really good shape just dirty I have quite a bit of this uh, techniques stuff coming up that uh, we'll be working on so I hope you enjoy techniques techniques whatever uh, let's see this one we have uh, our line in and line out for recording remote control amp in and out and synchro edit this one has a has a power plug so if you um, you plug this one into your receiver and then you have another unit that you're going to put on top of this like a CD player or the turntable you can plug get, get your power right out of here and then you run to your amp this one uh, not real sure the year on this one uh, the, tr the real uh, model number is RS-TR210P-K Serial number FJ1DB13508. Now, I don't think that that was made in 2008. Or do I think it was made in 1950? Now, it could be the 50th month of 98, 88, whatever. I'm thinking this is right around the 80s. Uh, when we go take a look at some stuff, we will find out. This one doesn't have feet, have the screw on feet. It's just got these little felt feet on it. And it looks like we're going to have to do a little work on those to get them to stick where they belong so it'll sit level on another piece of a... Uh, Another piece of electronics, another component. Uh, I gave you the history of techniques uh, when we did the turntable that's ready. Uh, so, this one, let's uh, go take a look at some other things about techniques. No history lesson. History lesson was in the last techniques. Uh, the notable products by techniques or technics. Yeah, technics. It's not techniques, it's technics. Uh, was uh, the turntable, the direct drive, SL 1200. Everyone should know that one. Uh, from 72 to 2010 and then reintroduced in 2016. Uh, then they had the SL 10 with a direct drive and a linear tracking 80 to 84 haven't seen one of those yet uh, stereo amplifier SU-C01 and 79 
receiver, typical receiver, 1980, that's the SA-202. Power amplifier, SE-A, -SE five power amplifier in 82. See, a lot of their really good stuff was in the 80s. Um, SUZ-980, 120 watt stereo amplifier, and and the STZ980 Z Z oh SU and ST okay AM FM tuner mid 80s uh, now I have we will be working on at some point we have an amplifier and a stereo tuner but um, ours is a 900 on the amp so I'll have to we'll look that one up when we finally get to it the Technique CD player SL-42 and preamplifier SU-A8 was in 85 and a digital amplifier SUG700 2018 that was a new one compared to a lot of this stuff and you can see early 60s, you know, they came out with a, a electronic organ in 63. An origin of Techn Technics SX keyboard series. After the 70s, uh, this product was branded Technotone. Oh, I remember that. Uh, and then, let's see, EAB-1204 loudspeakers. That was in 65. Uh, they did a lot of loudspeakers in the beginning. Premium loudspeakers later renamed to SB1204, nicknamed Technics, one inch. Then in the 60s, you know, you have your direct drive turntables all came out. The uh, SP10, SL1100, and SL1200, those were the two. The 1200 and the 1100, those two were the ones that were mainly used in the DJs and where you got the wah, wah, wah sound out of it. Uh, those ones they found that the the direct drive, it didn't hurt the motor. You could actually turn the record back and forth and it, it didn't hurt the motor. Where a belt, you'd end up throwing a belt or snapping the belt, trying to do that with one of the belt drives. 70s uh, receivers, uh, what's that, quadraphonic 8-track player. Uh, budget amplifiers ranging from 150 cheapest to 600 most expensive. That was an SA-50XX. XX. Budget amplifiers. And then the linear phase three-way loudspeakers. Uh, 70s. Uh, a lot of stuff. And they started picking up and building a lot of stuff in the 70s. 80s. This is when uh, a lot of our stuff is that we're playing with now. Uh, the stereo integrated amplifiers, the SU V3, V4, V5, V6, V7, V8, V9. Okay. And then you had the uh, SE A3 MK2 and through the power amplifiers and preamps. SVP100 digital audio recorder. That's VHS using VHS tapes. Cool. Also available as the SV100, a standalone PS PCM adapter requiring a separate VCR. And there's our cassette decks in the 80s. Cassette decks with uh, DBX noise reduction. And the, and the direct drive turntables in the 80s, synthesizers, cassette decks, direct drive, linear tracking turntables. That was the early 80, 80s, mid 80s. We had our E series. Two, two, two. S. Okay, the SLJ2 direct drive turntable. That one I'm familiar with. Then in the 90s and 2000s. During the 90s, uh, Te Technics launched a successful series of mini hi-fi systems, SC and EH series. SCCH, SCCA, SCCH series and SCDV series with CD players and surround sound. 
in the late 90s, the very successful series of micro hi-fi. Sorry about that. There was an email coming in. Systems. Huh. Okay. And then late 2000s, but remained for a while in home cinema market and both DVD players and receivers and speakers until 2002 when these were renamed Panasonic. Because if you remember, Panasonic bought Technics. And you can see they. this is uh, in the 90s and 2000s is when they started building the SST series of stuff. And then since 2014, Panasonic Corporation relaunched the Technics brand in the late 2014, mainly because of increasing market interest in high-end hi-fi and also due to renewed interest in vinyl. Sound familiar? The brand was relaunched with a series of amplifier speakers, micro hi-fi systems, but no turntables were yet available. The turntables were relaunched in 2016. Cool. As written above, 2016 of, on the occasion of the 50th anniversary of the SL1200, <coughs> excuse me, Technics uh, came back with the SL1200G. About 2017, a remarkable digital am amplifier, remarkable digital amplifier, the SU G700 was announced. Among the most successful products are the newly launched SL1500C turntable series. Hmm. And the Ottawa Micro Hi-Fi series. So see, even, even Technics, Panasonic, um, recognized that vinyl quit. That vinyl was coming back and gaining in popularity again. And let's see our cassette deck, the Technics huh. RS our RS TR210 stereo double cassette deck. Uh, the main feature of the of the Technics RSTR210 are the two head digital tape counter with three digital three digits. Uh, tape type selection and capable of handling normal chrome and metal tapes. Typical front loading double cassette deck with the cassette compartment located on the bottom side of the deck. Okay. Uh, level meter used on the RS TR210 are generic digital peak reading meter, meter, meters. Connection to the auto components for the playback can be achieved by the RCA cable and recorded from a source by an RCA cable. Now, look, typical front loading double cassette deck with the cassette compartment located on both sides of the deck. <laughs> okay. Now, when, when you say compartment, doesn't that kind of remind you of there's a uh, like a drawer or something or something that you that you would um, have a a compartment where you put a hide of tape? But no, the it's the deck itself. You can see the these higher end cassette decks. The drawers or drawers the doors always open slow. If you remember on a lot of the the cheap cheap stuff, you mash the button, it just flings it flings that door open and your tape rattles around in the in the door. Uh, and they kind of found out that you know this is a lot easier on your tape. Plus it, it looks better and sound and you know doesn't seem cheap. But okay. Uh, same as always, we're not going to plug this in until after we pull the cover and check the inside, make sure everything's okay on the inside, and then we'll clean our heads and our pinch rollers, check our belts and see how everything is, and then we will hook it up and see what it does. So let's get the cover off of this and see what we have inside. Okay, 
let's 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 get this critter let's get him undressed and see what the hell is under the under the hood I could say let's get her undressed and see what's under her skirt Now, like I have said before, you you don't have to do all this if you don't want to. You can just take it and plug it in and see if it works. But I don't know where this was sitting. And this one, uh, let's see, came from an online auction. So... Who knows where it was again this is another one that you know there's really no place for anything to get in it but I like to do it <laughs> for starters I like to see how the different manufacturers built their stuff not a whole lot of difference between a lot of them it's just a what goes in the boards come on See how it's ha <laughs> ha just lift straight up instead of on an angle. You don't want to break the tabs off. Okay. Same you know, got our got our circuit board, our transformer. <laughs> okay, uh, this is like the little one that we're, uh, we're working on another uh, techniques or techniques um, cassette deck. Only it's a single, and pretty much there. Their deck in that one is pretty much the same as this deck, these two decks. And hopefully, you know, that one, it seems a little loose. We may end up ordering belts for this one as well. We had to order belts for the, the other techniques and we may end up with new belts for this one which is okay that's what we want we want them to be reliable not play about halfway through and then sit there uh, let's see uh, still no date in here either I was hoping we could find a a date somewhere record level mm -hmm. Dolby by NR block record EQ block these are just a little these are the areas that they have them have these areas labeled You can see, like, this is the, the Dolby, Dolby NR block, and that'll be right in here. So if you're having a problem with that, with the Dol Dolby, not Dolby, Dolby NR block, you know this is where 
you, you can start looking on these. Uh, pretty, that's, you know, helps out a lot. Bias OSC block in there. Uh, I did see here, power supply block. So for if it's dead to the world, you know, to concentrate your efforts right through here. This little area here for your power supply. Uh, those caps feel pretty good, but if we if we're having a problem where it doesn't seem like we have enough power, that's we know that's where to start looking. Uh, control block. The control block is the one that has the big IC in it. Uh, the IC in this one is. Uh, M5942-52SP SP or 111102 and sometimes you can get a date off of the off of that chip but I don't think this is an O2 but no nothing Everything looks good. Nothing jumps out and says, hey, look at me. I look like crap. Yeah, but still no. No stinking date. Oh, well. It is what it is. I'll look, at, I'll look it up some more, and I'll, I may eventually find, find what year this is. Or if I don't, I'm sure somebody in the comments will let me know what year this is. Uh, the belts, like I said, seem seem a little little loose to me, but we'll we'll test it out and see um, if it drags at all. I mean, even a little bit, we will order in new belts for it because they're not that expensive, and these ones these ones are easy to change. I mean, the whole deck comes out of them. You take the four screws out here, 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 and here. Take your wires off and plug, and that whole whole deck will come out. And you can work on the back side of it, or you can sit here and and try and play with it while it's in. You, to get at your belts, you take out one, two, should three. I think there's a fourth one right down in there, and that that whole motor assembly will come up off of there, and you can get at your belt, all your belts. It's only two. Got your main drive belt and this little belt here. That's what uh, runs your your drives. But so far it looks pretty good. Nobody was living in it. I guess there was enough holes. We could have had some bugs in it, but no bugs. So now what we're gonna do next is we need to clean our heads. Clean your head. Make sure you got a clean head and our pinch rollers. And these pinch rollers really look nasty. Okay, we got one pinch roller here, and this deck has two pinch rollers. And what I mean by pinch rollers is I will show you here in a minute when we get I'll get my alcohol and everything all set up. In fact, this is the one that has the auto, uh, the reverse mode, as I can tell by the head. This one is a stationary, so this only goes one way. Okay, this is uh, the deck, deck one. We'll call it deck one. You can see the, see this is the, where are you at? There you are. There's the head right there. And this is the pinch roller, and you see the crud on that pinch roller. We'll try and get that cleaned up as much as we can, because when you're when you're playing the tape, it it will get on your tape, and we're just gonna kind of clean him off. You can see, you got a little bit of dirt. If it'll focus. And then the biggest thing is trying to get that pinch roller 
all cleaned up. Okay, that's what actually, this is what holds the tape steady to play. It pinches it on this pin, up against that pin. Then you just gotta kind of lightly clean the crap, the crud, off that pinch roller. It's mainly just, it's mainly dust. But, that's what gets on your tape, on your cassette tape, and that will give you a dirty spot and it may not want to play real good right there okay we'll let that dry and then this is a sec this is tape deck two we're gonna call it and see how the the head is different this is the one this is how it auto reverses it will when it goes to the end of the tape, it will flip around and then start playing the other way, playing back without having to change, without having to flip the, the tape over. Now I'm trying to do this by looking through the, the, the viewfinder on my camera and, it, and it's not working that good. All right, uh, yeah, this is not working out for me very well. Let me let me try a different. Let me switch hands. Here we can get right down in there. But you get the idea. Let me get the let me get those cleaned up, and then we can move on. All right, let's get this thing hooked up and see what it'll do. I checked in there, and there wasn't any any place really to service and put any grease on anything. Everything is pretty good shape. Let's see, line out okay. to there. Turn on our receiver. And power up. So far, so good. What do I have? Oh, what should we test it with? How about some CCR? CCR in. I think that's it. Let's. Nope. Let's... Do I have a problem with my tape? Let's try. Try something different. Yep, it's the tape. Something's going on with that tape. I don't. I don't think that counter. Well, it says 
counter reset two. I don't see a counter reset one. Yeah, see this one has the auto reverse and like I said that one doesn't. Just a playback. And this one's the record playback. We'll get that. Rewound. There she goes. Well, you see, it still didn't count. And let's check our level. Yep, levels are working. I hate not being able to play anything except for, you know, six seconds. really hard to show you when st uh, how stuff's working. Okay. okay. This deck here has the counter and everything. Uh, this is more or less like your main deck here where normally deck one is the one that's always used and deck two is the one that it doesn't get used as much but this one with deck two this is the one that has auto reverse and everything on it and a counter so you would be more apt to play deck two all the time instead of deck one but I you know Okay, well then, deck one would be used more for dubbing. This is where you'd put your sacrificial tape in here. <laughs> That's where you'd put your main tape in there and then dub it over to here. It, it's just different how they have this one set up compared to most of the other ones. The other ones, uh, the last one we did had auto reverse on both decks, not just the one, but this one just has it on the one. So I'm gonna, I'll play this for a little while and check everything out and we'll see how everything is functioning and then I will bring you back and let you know because I can't play much to show you anything. Well, that's Sure is dark. That sucker's all black in the front, so it's really, really hard to, to see in the camera here. Uh, let's get a little light on it. Okay. Now, on this uh, dual cassette deck here, this one does not have dubbing. You cannot record, you know, record one to another. This would be a record side, but you can't put a uh, tape in here and play and record over here. This one is only source in. In other words, you have to have a source coming in in order to record on that deck. Like if we hooked up a CD player or an album, or an album, if we hooked up a turntable in between this and we pushed our turntable in, we could record it here. That's the only way, this is, that's the only recording that you can do on this is source in. Uh, now the auto reverse, like I said before, is you have your tape in, you play, this is your normal way that you would play. And you can play the other side just by pushing the play on the other side. Yeah. 
and that's what's nice about the auto reverse and the auto reverse also it'll play all the way to the end of this one side and then it'll flip over and play the other side back the other way uh, really nice has your record line or your level on it for your music oops I hit the wrong one what You have your record levels and your counter. So mainly you would use this one a lot for recording and you do a lot of playing over here. But with the auto reverse, I'd rather play with the auto reverse side. That way it'll flip over and I'm not over here every time when the side when one side's done, I don't have to come over and flip it over. This way it would play to the end and then start playing the other side back. And you wouldn't have to come over and flip a tape. So it's up to you. It's kind of a weird design if you ask me. It should Both of them should have had auto reverse on them. And, but, you know, this might be a little bit lower end of the Technics. The RSTR210. Uh, some of the other ones probably have dubbing on them. Uh, if you remember, if I posted that Techwood uh, dual deck, that one had dubbing on it and it sounded really well. This one does too. The Technics uh, has really good sound. If you have a really good tape, I have a couple of tapes here that are a little little older and they've been I've played them so much that uh, they kind of fade in a few spots. <laughs> because they've been played a lot. But it is it's a good deck. Um, and if your belts are good and you're finding your, you have your tape seems to be slow, you know, and you put a new belt on it and it, it's still slow, you have speed adjustments. Those three speed adjustments right there. This one is deck one. Since it only goes one way, you'll be adjusting your speed to go the one way. On deck two, you have two pots here for adjusting the speed for either way that it's playing. And you have your erase cue adjustment. You know, there, there's some adjustments on this one that um, aren't normally on other ones. PB gain, uh, well, I don't know. And then you have, what's this? Oh, record gain. You can adjust your record gain. You know, you can, this one can be really fine-tuned if, uh, if you're having a problem. But uh, the best way to do this is if you had an oscilloscope to where you could set it up your oscilloscope and, and really dial in everything. But, hey, but, you know, you can play it by ear. If you put new belts on it and it still seems like it's playing slow, you can uh, adjust your speed a little bit on it. I wouldn't recommend it if, it, you know, first thing I would do is belts and make sure everything's uh, working properly in your drive before you, your deck, before you start playing around with those adjustments. It's just an option in case. Be more for a technician to do it, not not somebody that's just pissing around with them. Uh, so, uh, this is another good deck. All we have to do is get it cleaned up the rest of the way, and it'll be ready to go. Alright, now we'll get these two, two feet fixed up. I got some double-sided tape here. That I'm going to use if I can find the end. And we'll just cut square. Don't stick. Don't stick. Oh, you stuck a little. Put him right there. Now, well, fun part, peeling it. Come on. <laughs> we'll take 
make our little foot here. Put him right, right there. Perfect. Perfect. Same thing up here. Take our little foot. Here we go. Well, we got those all taken care of too. Okay, got everything. And there it is. Got it all cleaned up. All clean, it works. Some power on. Open it up. Drop in a little CCR. Doesn't, it doesn't like this, my CCR. This CCR is cracked. Will not play it. Alright, we'll put in a little best of. Wrong side. So, she's all working and ready to go. So, I hope you enjoyed this video on uh, Technics RSTR210. And I hope to see you on the next one. So, until next time, see ya.